In my last last lecture, I have discussed about the various types of pile. So, in the, this lecture, I will continue uh, those classifications. And so, based on the shape, the pile can be classified as a cylindrical pile, tapered pile, and the under rim pile. Okay. So, this under rim pile is suitable for expansive soil and if it is loose to medium granular soil, then tapered pile is suitable. It will distribute the load and the material efficiently and the cohesive soil underlaid by granular soil cylindrical pile is suitable. And then uh, what is under rim piles? So, under rim pile is uh, pile which we are provided the bulb. Okay. So, uh, it is generally um, 150 to 200 millimeter shaft diameter. So, shaft diameter is this diameter, this is the shaft diameter. Okay. Then it is uh, for 3 to 4 meter long and under the portion is 2 to 3 times of the shaft diameter. So, this diameter if this is the shaft diameter 3. Uh, d. So, this is 2 to 3 times of the d, this is the bulb diameter okay, used for the expansive soil. So, how it is been constructed? For first, the boring is done for the with the use of auger, then uh, under rimming is done by the under rimmer. So, here this is the under rimmer by which we can provide the under rim part, part. then placement of reinforcement case is placed, I mean uh, in position placing of reinforcement cage in position, the reinforcement cage is placed, then the concreting is done into the soil and finally, the uh, concreting of the pile cap. So, that means, first the, it is uh, boring is done, then this under rim is uh, rimming is done by the, by the under rimmer and then this casing is placed in the position, then the concreting is, is, is done and then the pile cap concreting is done. So, that is why it is, it is suitable for expansive soil. So, next one is the mode of load trans transfer. So, I in the uh, for, uh, previous class I have discussed that can be the end bearing piles, friction piles or combination of end bearing and the friction pile. So, end bearing pile act as column transmit the load through a weak soil to a hard stratum and the ultimate load carrying capacity of pile ideally it should be equal to the load carrying capacity by the bottom end. So, as I mentioned that pile load carrying capacity is from the friction or the uh, from the side soil and the um, tip or the bearing. Okay. So, now if the all the loads are or the resistance pile are get, getting from the tip then it is called the end bearing pile. So, that means, if the top soil is very loose or very soft, then this pile is trans, uh, passing through uh, this, this pile is passed through this uh, soft soil and it is rested on the uh, hard soil or the hard stratum. In that case, the resistance coming from the friction part is very really negligible compared to the bearing. Okay, because that is the hard stratum and the top portion is very soft or the loose because that is why the friction resistance will be very less compared to the bearing resistance. So, that type of pile is called the bearing pile okay. and uh, friction pile it do not these uh, these piles do not reach hard stratum transport the load through the friction between the soil and the pile and ultimate load carrying capacity or the capacity of the pile is due to the friction only okay, theoretically, but that means the majority of the um, bearing capacity of the pile is coming from the friction because, and it is not rested on the hard stratum, it is on that uh, soil, it is on the uh, soil itself and there it is getting the resistance and the tip resistance though it is getting some tip resistance, but, but that is not significant as compared to the friction resistance. So, the majority of the contribution is from the friction resistance. So, that type of pile is called the friction pile. Now, uh, sometimes this uh, pile can be combination of these two that means, the uh, contribution is coming from the friction as well as the bearing 
okay and both the contribution is not negligible okay these are both the contributions are significant amount so that type of pile is called the com combined end bearing and the friction pile so the method of installation the pile can be driven pile so this is the one uh, example of the uh, driven pile or i have given the photographs of the driven pile so first the pile is placed and it is hammer blow is applied over the pile okay so that means a driving force is applied and it is installed into the ground so i have the uh, one uh, youtube video so this is the pile where this driving this is the hammer and this hammer has a weight and this is the free fall this height this is the free fall this is the hammer so you are applying the driving force so pile is driving into the soil so finally this is where it is been drive so these are called the driven pile and the next type of pile is called the bored pile so where the first step is boring is done and then the your um, reinforcement is placed and concreting is done and finally the casing is if it is a casing is there so casing is lifted so one example of uh, this is the one photographs of the uh, boring or the boat pile and then i have one video where also so this is the boring is done and then once the boring is done this hole is created then the reinforcement is this is the reinforcement cage is placed then the concrete is in, is done okay so uh, this is the example of boat pile so driven pile this is the um, i mean uh, soil where you can prefer uh, the pile should be uh, um, installed by driving so if the soil is granular loose granular soil because then what will happen during the driving because here the pile we are applying a hammer blow or driving force so it is inserted into the soil so because of this driving if the soil is loose then this soil will be compacted so it will increase the shear resistance so pile load carrying capacity will increase so this is suitable if the soil is loose granular soil then the driven pile is suitable then the boat pile best suited for clay soil okay and jetted pile so here a jet is applied uh, to loosen the soil so it is suitable if the soil is in compacted state so here we apply a jet in form of water also so we can apply a jet so we, we, which is suitable if the soil is in compacted state so next one the method of forming so pile can be precast concrete pile so the precast concrete pile mean this this is the this uh, pile is casted uh, before and in a, a central casting yard uh, so that mean you you can have a specific length and you can cure that pile and then you can ship this pile to the construction site so that mean it there is a, if there is a casting yard where the piles are casted okay then it is shifted to the site one option another that if in the site the space is available then casting yard may be provided in the site so that means it is casted then it is taken to the site then its length can be go up to 20 meter or shorter pile can take up to 600 kilo newton load and for the longer pile it can go up to 2000 kilo newton capacity so this is pre cast concrete piles and then pre stressed concrete piles okay this is formed by the tensioning high strength steel that mean the pre stress cable and then casting of concrete is done about the cable that mean uh, before the casting there is a high strength pre stress uh, cable is placed and then concrete is is done within that uh, about that cables and when the uh, concrete is uh, hardened then this pre stress cables are cut okay so that's why it can take more amount of load and this and another is the cast in situ pile 
Okay. So, one is the precast, one is the pre-stressed, another is the casting CPU. So, these piles are constructed or installed in the site itself. Okay. So, that means, these casting CPU piles are formed by making a hole in the ground and filling it with the concrete. So, that means, first the hole is uh, done, then the casing is placed or if the um, it is a driven pile. So, that means, uh, then the pile uh, casing is fill, uh, placed and the filling is done uh, with the concrete. So, if the hole is formed by drilling, then it is called board cast in situ pile. Okay. So, that means, your once the this hole that means, first the hole is created, then the concrete is done. Okay. If this hole is created by boring, then this is or, or uh, this drilling if the hole is created by this uh, drilling, then this type of pile is called the board cast in situ pile. If it is formed by driving a metallic shell or a casing into the ground, then it is called driven cast in situ pile. So, that means, the bore if it is done by boring or drilling, then this is called the board cast in situ, if the hole is done by drilling and if the hole is done by driving a casing or metallic shell into the ground, then it is called drive driven cast in situ. Now, if during concreting the cast casing is lifted, a casing is lifted in position or the casing is left in position, then it is termed as cased pile. And if the casing is gradually withdrawn during the concreting, then it is called the uncased pile. That means, the whole the um, concreting is done by, by keeping the casing into the hole, then it is called the cased pile. And if the casing is withdrawn, then it is called the uncased pile. Okay. So, I have uh, uh, some video of this is the video of a uncased uh, pile, where you can see that this is the casing, which is first inserted into the ground okay. and then this bottom portion is cleaned, if there is any soil, then again further it is inserted into the ground. then hole is created, then the reinforcement cage is placed into the hole and then the concrete is, is done by keeping the casing. So, once the construction is done, then this casings are also removed. Sometimes piles can be enlarged base pile. So, that is one uh, example that here this is the hole is done by this driving force. Then this is the enlarged base is done by this driving and then the casing is placed then concrete is, is done. Okay. After that, it is the casing is removed. So, these are uh, different types of piles. So, now the precast and pre stressed piles are generally used for the uh, marine structure, it is generally, okay. it is not the always and the pre-stress pile have uh, large vertical load and bending moment capacity and which are used uh, if this uh, kind of requirements are there. Okay. So, because we, it is under pre-stress, so it can take large amount of the vertical load and then the bending moment. And cast in situ pile, if the soil is in poor drainage quality, and because if soil is has a, uh, soil has a poor drainage quality, then what will happen during the driving, the pore water pressure will develop. 
if soil has a poor drainage quality. Now, this pore water pressure will reduce the effective stress and that is why the strength of the soil will reduce. So, you will get a less amount of the bearing capacity of the pile. So, if the drainage quality is very poor, then casting C2 uh, pile or is suitable driven pile or the precast piles are the uh, driven pile because this precast pile you have to drive into the soil. So, that is not suitable. Now, uh, this is also suited when you have to avoid some vibration uh, to save the adjacent structures because during the driving there will be lots of vibration. So, if you avoid those vibration or, or noise then you have to go for the cast in situ piles. Okay. So, now uh, based on the displacement the pile has uh, is two types one is the displacement piles one is the non displacement piles. So, all driven piles are displacement piles because as the pile is driven into the soil, the, uh, the soil is displaced okay, laterally when the pile is installed. Okay. So, that means, uh, this soil is laterally displaced when you are installing this pile by driving. So, all the driven piles are displacement piles and both piles are non-displacement piles because here you are not applying any driving. So, that is why it is non-displacement piles. So, uh, there are some advantages and the disadvantages of um, precast piles. So, as mean, uh, mentioned that pile can be precast, pre-stressed and cast in situ. So, this is the uh, advantages of precast concrete pile. What is the advantages? The piles are uh, cast in control environment. So, uh, you have a better quality control during the casting of the pile and the required number of piles you can cast in advance. Okay? And if the soil is loose then driven pile if you apply the precast pile which is driven into the soil. So, so the soil is compacted. So, this strength of the soil increases. So, you will get higher bearing capacity or load carrying capacity of the pile. Now, reinforcement remain in proper position because in the in the casting C2 piles the problem is that you have to be very careful about the reinforcement, reinforcement. when you are uh, doing the concreting the reinforcement position may may shift. So, uh, that problem will not be here because it is in the control environment. So, in the peak cast concrete the reinforcement remain in proper position, but the disadvantages of the precast concrete piles that additional reinforcements are required due to the handling and transportation. What is that means that these piles are casted in the casting yard. So, we have to transport this pile to the site. So, during the handling and the transportation uh, additional stress is uh, developed in the pile okay, because you have to uh, lift these piles through canes cranes. So, we have to provide uh, uh, cables and then you have to lift because of this lift the additional force uh, that will be induced in the reinforcement uh, in the pile. So, additional stress is uh, induced in the pile. So, we have to pro uh, provide the additional reinforcement to take care of those stresses. Okay? And special requirements are required for handling and driving the piles. Then piles can be damaged during the handling and transportation. So, during the handling and transportation there is a possibility if you do not uh, take the precaution these piles can be damaged and if the soil is saturated. So, as I mentioned then the or the drainage soil drainage is very poor then the pore water pressure is developed which, which reduces the shear strength of the soil and ultimately the pile load capacity is reduced. So, if this type of soil is there then we will avoid this precast pile or the driven piles. Then the length adjustment is difficult that uh, in the site if uh, you found that if you found that this length of the pile is uh, too short or too, too long based on your requirement then that adjustment is very difficult. Okay. So, that is these are the uh, 
disadvantages of the precast concrete pile. So, uh, this is the advantages and the disadvantages. So, next one is the advantages of cast in situ concrete piles. So, so that means the length of the pile can be increased or decreased uh, easily. So, that means the length adjustment can be done easily because you are casting this pile in the site. Okay. So, no additional reinforcement is required because here you are not transporting these piles to the um, from the uh, casting here to the site. So, no additional uh, reinforcement is required because this handling stress will not be will not be developed. So, that means no additional reinforcement is required to take care of those stresses. Then uh, if you found that you have to construct the uh, additional pile, those can be done very quickly because you are casting in the site and little uh, chance of damage due to handling and transportation because as you are um, casting this pile in the site. So, there is a little chance of damage and the handling uh, of this due to handling of this pile. Okay, then this advantage of this is the cast in C2 concrete pile. This is not the uh, precast. This is the uh, disadvantage of cast in C2 pile. This is cast in C2 concrete pile. So, what is the disadvantage? This is the um, because the um, precast piles are uh, uh, constructed in a control environment. But here that is why the quality control was very easy, but this casting C2 pile quality control is difficult. So, you have to take care to for the quality control, then the you have to take care that whether during the concreting the reinforcement is properly placed or not, whether there is a, any shift of the reinforcement during the concreting or the concreting is properly compacted or not. So, those things you have to take care of these cast in situ piles. Then if the um, uh, soil is uh, very loose, then uh, this soil is not compacted or the compaction is not that significant as, com significant as compared to the driven pile or the precast pile. Then uh, have to provide a lots of storage uh, space uh, is required for the material storage, the store purpose. So, these are the all uh, ad advantages and the disadvantages of the uh, precast pile and the cast in situ piles. So, and then uh, uh, we have the even in the cast in situ pile, this can be bored or this can be driven. So, I have uh, discussed uh, already. So, that means precast piles are mainly the driven piles and the cast in situ piles can be also bored and driven cast in situ. So, what is the um, uh, difference between two uh, cases? that board cast in situ piles, the large diameter pile can be made, installation can be made without uh, a significant amount of noise and vibration and boring may, may be loosen the granular soil. And uh, for the uncased pile, concreting is difficult due to the presence of drilling mud and boring pi board piles are commonly cheaper length of the pile can be changed or varied depending upon the ground condition. But on the other hand, for the driven pile, driven cast in situ piles, the diameter of the pile cannot be made too large, but here it is large diameter is possible, but here diameter of the pile cannot be made too large. So, this is one difference between two piles, then more noise and vibration are created, but here this is vibration and uh, noise is very limited. Then granular soil is compacted. So, if the soil is loose, then it is been compacted, but the um, here the compaction is for the boring pile, the granular soil uh, compaction is very uh, rare and the drilling mud is not required because it is in driven pile, but here the drilling mud is uh, required for uncase cast in situ pile. So, this is the 
differences. Okay. Another one here granular soil is compacted, here the boring may be loosened the granular soil. So, here the granular soil is compact loosened, here it is compacted. So, if the soil is granular soil loose granular soil is there, then the driven pile is more suitable or recommended. Then it is costlier uh, especially the cased one, but it is uh, commonly cheaper. Okay. And the length of the pile can be changed or varied depending upon the ground condition, but here length adjustment is very difficult because it is already uh, I mean driven uh, cast in situ pile. So, here the length. So, I have also discussed for the uh, your precast piles also that the length adjustment is very difficult. So, these are the differences between the board cast in situ piles and driven cast in situ piles. So, that is why, uh, so I have uh, given the all types of piles based on uh, their shape, uh, then uh, cross section, method of installation, then load sharing, then whether it is displaced or not, uh, it is not displaced then this displacement piles or non displacement piles. Then, so I mean this is a one uh, summary. So, this is remember that these information are only for the guidelines during the initial planning. Okay. So, these are not a final value. So, final value we have to calculate based on the available theories that we will discuss in the next class. Okay, so, these are timber piles. So, usual range is uh, 10 to 18 meter, maximum it can go to 30 meter and this is the usual range of the approximate design load and this is the maximum range of the design load. So, you can see the steel pile, it can take uh, higher uh, load for the larger diameter or small diameter. So, it can take higher load up to, it can take 10,000 kilo Newton. So, this is in kilo Newton, so it can take up to 10,000 kilo Newton, where a timber pile can take maximum as I mentioned, uh, this is up to within this range. 150 to 250 uh, kilo Newton, but can take maximum 300 kilo Newton. So, it is smaller for the smaller load and the composite pile also it can take up to 2000 kilo Newton load and if the concrete cast in bulk piles, bulk piles mean if the base is enlarged, then it can take for the large diameter 9000 kilo Newton also. Okay. And this is the cast in situ concrete pile. So, it is can take the 900 kilo Newton, driven peak, peak cast it also take maximum 9, 900 kilo Newton, this is the probable range. Okay. So, this is the driven peak cast pile which is also maximum 900 and probable range is 300 to 600 kilometer. So, this is the probable pile length. Okay. So, what is the different length of the maximum length and this is the usual range that we use. So, these are different pile driven p cast, driven pre stress, div, uh, cast in concrete and concrete uh, cast in C2. Okay. Ca cast in C2 concrete and this is cast in C2 bulb. So, here the diameter is or the base diameter is more compared to this one. So, that means uh, here the uniform um, shape and here it is bulb if the diameter base diameter is more then it will take the higher uh, load. So, these are the all summary of different kinds of pile and then uh, as I mentioned depending upon the type of soil depending upon your site requirement you have to choose which type of pile you will use uh, based on different uh, maybe for different cost section for different loading and then uh, for the installation also which pile you will which methodology you will use during the installation. So, this is the all types of piles I have discussed in the next class I have I will discuss about the uh, load carrying capacity of the piles uh, what are the various methods available to determine the load carrying capacity of the pile. Thank you.